TNG, the next generation, a genealogy application. This video is brought to you by the Alberta Family History Society through the website feature familygenes.ca. A tour of a working TNG website. TNG, the next generation of genealogy site building, is an internet based genealogy application that you can register with Darren Lithgow. He will send you the files for setting up your TNG website. Then you can subscribe to a web hosting service, upload the TNG files, configure the PHP coding, and create the database in SQL. If you have programming and website experience, you should be able to pull this off. Or it might be a bit easier if you sign up with FamilyGenes.ca, in which case, all of the initiation of the application various background database building tools, servers, requirements on your host website, those things are looked after for you so you can just get started right away into the program. What we are going to do right now is to give you a quick tour through some of the features that Darren has put into his own personal TNG. We'll visit several pages inside his TNG including pages of an individual, pedigree chart, family photos, and a surname index. Let's start the tour. This is Darren's TNG welcoming website. Be sure to visit and explore the many available features inside TNG. Let's now dig into some of these features within Darren's own personal family tree. Scroll down the screen and see the sample pages list on the left. We are going to visit individual, pedigree, Relationships, Surnames, Most Wanted, Timeline, Photos, Histories and Cemeteries. But as you can see, there are a lot more. Check it out. We will now click on Individual and see one of his ancestors. His example individual page is for Margaret Adeline Keeley, who lived from 1840 to 1923. You'll see that there's a thumbnail image of Margaret in the upper left. There are several choices in the menu bar across the top. We'll explore some of these. Going down further, there are the basic vital statistics. Information on Margaret, her full name, date born, date christened, her gender, died, and burial information. Then there is something here called Person ID. That's a reference number within TNG that is used for unique identification of persons. Down further, we have Margaret's father, James Cooley, and her mother, Anne Curran, and the vital information on them and when they got married. Again, we see another ID number here, the family ID for John and Anne's family. That keeps uniqueness on the various families that you're going to build up in your TNG database. Margaret married John George Carlyle and they had eight children, all listed here. John and Margaret now have their own unique family ID. And now we get into example photos. You can even click here if you want a slideshow of the photos if you wish. Sliding down, we see various pictures coming into view. Further down, you can see how we hold on to documents, headstones, history books on the Culeys, even notes further down. So now we are going to determine the pedigree information on Margaret by clicking on Ancestors. These are the ancestors of Margaret. On the left is Margaret, then her father James Cooley and her mother Anne Curran, plus their parents, plus their parents, plus their parents, and so on. You have the ability, where you see an orange triangle, to go further up the pedigree chart into other ancestors. The blue triangle beneath James Cooley's name box indicates that there is information available on his family. 
Let me scroll a bit further so that it is visible. You see more details on his birth and death. The advantage to this is that you can see the basic information just by hovering. You don't need to open up a brand new page if you just want to get the quick information on that person. But yet again, wherever you see a name that is blue and underlined, called a hyperlink, it allows you to click on and go directly to that individual's information page. As you can see, each name of the eight children are also hyperlinks, and you can explore their individual pages by clicking. For example, Margaret is one of the children, and we can return to her by clicking here. And now we are back to Margaret Adeline Cooley. Now we visit relationships. The relationship page shows you the connection between related people. Darren wants to know his connection to his great aunt Clara Ann Bohm. This page shows the path between them and the proper relationship at the bottom. Let's now go and explore surnames. Returning to the website home page, click Surnames. On this page we'll see a couple of things. Across the top is the ability to see all surnames starting with a particular letter. This is handy if you know the surname you want to work with. Looking a little further down, we have a horizontal bar graph that shows us the frequency of occurrence of surnames in the database. The most prominent ten names will have a bar starting with the most frequent at the top. For Darren's research, Smith occurs with 195 individuals, followed by the surname England, then Booth, then Wheeler, and so on. We see Lithgow is here with 75 people with that surname. So let's have a look at that. Click on Lithgow, and now we have a table listing Lithgows. Those people with the Lithgow surname are sorted alphabetically. We know that because there's a little triangle here that indicates the column is sorted ascending. You can click on these white triangles and change the direction of sorting. You will notice that we are still in Lithgow, but the name at the top is now Zachary, followed by Wilson. We can restore the order again just by clicking on the white triangle. Need to break down brick walls? Then let's go to the website home page and click on Most Wanted. Missing links in the family chain are always a major block on your research. So here's a page for posting missing and misplaced persons. Here you can list the people and what you are looking for under elusive people. Scroll further down and you can post mystery photos. There is room for descriptions and clickable links for adding responses. Timelines will enrich your family tree. You can't do family research without understanding the place in history that your ancestors occupied. There are so many influences on such family events as migrations, occupations, and even longevity being driven by wars, famine, epidemics, and evolving industries. A timeline is a great way to put it all in context. Here is Fanny Baum, who lived from 1898 to 1970. We easily see through this timeline that she was a young girl during the First World War, married at 20 years to Ulrich Andrew Sorensen, then had a daughter, and lived through the Second World War. This opens up some research questions. Did her husband go off to war? Is the daughter still alive? Darren provides a basic history timeline for you, but you can add your own events, perhaps for British or Canadian flavored history. And now, on to the Photos section. What perks up any biography site? Why, photographs, of course. And TNG has a place for all your family album photos. Here are Darren's relatives, with thumbnail images down the left side, and a description in the middle. The photos are organized by the photo name, so you want to choose that photo name with some thought. If it is connected to a person in the database, you can have a link to that individual on the right-hand column. By hovering over an image, you see a larger presentation. Or if you click on the image, 
get a full view and some more details. To see how references are handled, click on Histories. TNG is able to handle sources and citations. The Histories page shows you the books and documents references for this family tree. The images tell you whether this is a book type reference or a document. The Histories tool helps you organize all your reference material without cluttering up the individual's pages. For the end of our tour, we now go to cemeteries. Ah, cemeteries. Well, your ancestors finally cannot run away from you. Cemeteries tell you where your relatives usually spent the last years of their lives. Cemeteries can also be clusters of relatives that live together in a community. So let's explore one of Darren's connections to Canada. Here is a long list of three countries, several provinces, regions and states, and then many, many cemeteries. Let's open up Waterloo in Canada. This takes us to the Winterburn Cemetery in Woolwich Township, just southwest of Toronto. By hovering over any headstone, such as for Elizabeth Barron, you can read the inscription. As in the photos area, you can also click on the image for more details. TNG also has a separate section on headstones that you can explore for ideas. So please visit the TNG software website for some familiarity and to get more ideas. In the next three videos we will open up our own TNG website and start to add family information.